Welcome, my friends, to the Cardos Pizzeria. Kind of. Uh, okay, so here we go. Here's my pizza shop, right? And let's say, in my horrendously drawn pizza shop, that I own... There's 100 shares. Okay. Uh, I own 80 of them. And you own 20 of them. You'd still be happy. Okay? And the shares are worth, let's say, $10 each. Okay. So, let's have a look at our pizzeria in a bit more detail, okay? You've got all these tables and menus and lights. I can tell you the fixtures and fittings uh, are worth about 700 And we have some stock to make the pizzas. That's worth a hundred, okay? And that's pretty much it. All right, that's 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 our thing. We don't own the pizza shop itself. Um, we rent that out. So our net assets are therefore eight hundred. All with me, okay? Our net assets are worth eight hundred. Now, I want to look at you. I want to look at the NCI, the non-controlling interest. So I control because I own eighty percent. I want to look at the non-controlling interest, right? And you've heard me talk about before, you've heard me talk about the proportionate method. Now, when we did the proportionate method, uh, I gave you your share. So I gave you 20% of the fair value of the net assets. Okay. So I would be giving you 20% of 800 if that was the fair value. If it was just the book value, if the fiction and fittings were in reality worth a little bit more, then we'd make that adjustment. But let's say that that is both the book value and the fair value. So you would get 20% of 800, which is 160. Okay. Now there is another method of working out NCI, working out how much your value in the business is worth. And this is all at the beginning, by the way. At acquisition. So fair value, what it could be, this is often just given in the exam. And it's basically, so often given in the exam, just a figure that's given. But it basically is uh, your shares, the NCI share value. So in that case, you own 20 shares at $10 each. Which is $200. Which is different to $160. And the difference is goodwill. Okay, The difference is goodwill. So that extra 40 is the goodwill, your share of the goodwill. Let me explain. Back to my little pizza house, okay? Stock and fiction and fittings is 800. Fair value of them is 800. But that's not really the fair value of my business, is it? I've been selling pizzas for a long time. People like me. So my business is worth more than just minor assets. How much more is my business worth? Well, there's 100 shares at $10 each. So my business is actually worth, according to the market, 1,000. Not... 800. Where did the other 200 come from? The other 200 must be the goodwill that's in the business. Remember, goodwill is the business reputation, your customer base, etc. So that would be the goodwill. So when we do proportionate, I just gave you a share of the net assets. So when we do proportionate, I give you no goodwill. When we do this, I give you your share of goodwill. So that's what you need to remember. If you do the proportionate method, you don't get given any share of the goodwill. You just get given the share of the stock, of the fixtures and fittings, a share of the net assets. When you do fair value, you get a share of the whole business, which therefore means you get a share of the goodwill as well. Remember we said the goodwill must be 800 net assets, 1,000 fair value of the shares. So goodwill must be 200. So if goodwill is 200... You deserve 20% of that goodwill. 20% of 200 is 40, and that's the difference. Look, the 40 is the difference between the 160 and the 200. In the fair value, I've given you the um, 
I've given you your share of goodwill, okay. So, what we're going to go and look at in a minute is not only just doing NCI with good with fair value, which is great because it's just given in the exam most often. Um, you just don't need to be careful with impairments of goodwill. Goodwill does get impaired. So, impairment of goodwill is always credit goodwill. Okay, so let's say it's credit goodwill, I don't know, with 10. All right. Now, we can debit the income statement with that 10. And if we debit the income statement, that means we're always debiting retained earnings as well. Okay, so let's say goodwill has been impaired by 10. And you've put all that 10, you've reduced goodwill, that's the credit to goodwill. So you've done that, you've reduced the goodwill because it's been impaired. But you've put all of the 10 to the income statement to retained earnings. That means I've given it all totally to myself. And that must mean I must have been doing the proportionate method. Because I don't want to give the NCI any impairment of goodwill because they've got no goodwill. Okay, so I would debit all of the goodwill to myself. If this was the fair value method, I would debit NCI as well with 2, and I would only get 8. That would be in that method, if we're doing the fair value method. So if you're doing the fair value method, NCI gets some goodwill, so it also gets some impairment. So let me make that clear then. Two methods, proportionate. Under the proportionate method, NCI gets no goodwill. It only gets its share of the net assets. If we do the fair value method, NCI gets its goodwill share. So, if there's been an impairment of goodwill, none of it goes to NCI. If we're doing fair value, some of it does go to NCI. So let's say that goodwill has been impaired, has gone down by 100. Let's say that NCI is 30%. Okay. And let's do the double entry then, if it was the proportionate or if it was the fair value method. Okay. If goodwill has gone down by 100, we would credit goodwill with 100 and we would debit, if it's doing the proportionate, NCI doesn't get any, so it all goes to me, it all goes to income statement and therefore retained earnings, all 100. If I was doing the fair value method, they do get their share, so they do get their share of goodwill, so they do get the share of any goodwill impaired. So debit NCI with 30% of 100, which is 30, and then debit the income statement and retained earnings with my share of 70. OK, so just remember that proportionate, they don't get goodwill, so they don't get impairment of goodwill. Fair value, they do get goodwill, so they do get the impairment of goodwill. OK, let's do some examples.